Hello! Welcome back to the channel. Today is unboxing day. If you don't know what I'm doing yet, go back and watch my first video in this series, and that is my plan going forward for the business. But long story short, I have decided to start metalsmithing and turn into a fun little game for myself. So I went ahead and ordered pretty much all the supplies that I need to get started. I'm going to show you what I ordered, where I ordered it from, and how much I paid for it. I am trying to learn how to metalsmith on a budget, basically. I am going to show you what kind of tools I bought and supplies, and I went for a nice middle quality so that I don't have to replace these things anytime soon. I did buy from three companies, Amazon, who doesn't buy from Amazon at this point, Pepe Tools, and Rio Grande. Pepe Tools and Rio Grande are two very major suppliers for metal smithing and jewelry smithing. They have a ton of cool stuff on there and they have it in a wide variety of prices, which is awesome. They have beginner stuff all the way up to severely advanced stuff that I have no clue what it does. Let's get to unboxing because I really want to tear apart these packages. Before I start unboxing stuff, I want to show you what I bought to start this whole project off. The first thing I bought was a soft frame. I really like very pretty, beautiful soft frames. I've looked at a couple of them, but they were all super expensive. So I went on Amazon and I found this one. This is from a company called Megacast on Amazon. And I found out it looks like it's a knockoff of the Green Lion soft frame. The Green Lion is probably a better build quality than it. Definitely looks like it, comparing on the pictures and talk and listening to reviews from other jewelers. But I gotta say this one's not bad. Definitely works, it still looks pretty. And I gotta say, I'm quite happy with it. The second thing I bought was a bench pin. Anyone who is a jeweler and has sawn, you kind of need one of these and you saw on top of it. I found this one on Amazon also. I love the little holes that it has. It's definitely been super useful. It works really well for me. It's not a hard piece of wood. It's a very soft wood. So I have sawed into it a few times already. So there's a couple, there's some saw markings on it already. I don't know if you can see them on the camera there, but it works really well. Uh, definitely works for what I'm using it for for now. And I know there are a lot of jewelers that like to uh, create their own bench pins. I'm happy with this. It works for me. Now, the problem I had was I kept breaking blades. So I found out you do need to get actual good blades because the blades that come with the soft frames are typically not great. I did pick up a small assortment of saw blades. These are like the little trial packs where there's 12 in each pack here. They're pretty cheap. These are the nano saw blades, nano saw blades from Pepe Tools. I bought a few of them to test them out and the ones that I like, I'm going to buy the full like 144 pack. But I have a couple different gauges of metal, so I'm trying to figure out what I like working with and what saw blades work for those gauges that I want to work. The other thing I learned is that you want to make sure your saw blades are lubricated. Blade butter! So I got some blade butter. Um, this actually came off of Amazon also, but it is from Pepe Tools, their Bench Basics, which is a really cool set of like just tools and supplies that you need to start silversmithing. But this stuff works really well. I've seen a lot of people do recommend using beeswax. I said I'm just going to go with the blade butter. I intend to be sawing for a while and this little tub will last me a very long time, judging by how much I've used of it already. The last thing I got was some double-sided tape. So it's just a little tiny Amazon find. I found out very quickly that taping a design down onto a piece of sheet does not work. You can't just put tape over it. You'll cut through the tape and that falls off. So I saw the little hack about using either uh, sticker paper and printing your designs out on there, or if I, you know, I draw a design, I am just going to take a piece of double-sided tape, stick it onto my copper sheet, and stick it right on top. So, cheap little find. Now, to get to the unboxing part. First thing came in this little FedEx package, and that's my torch. I went with the Dremel VersaFlame. I saw a bunch of reviews. I need to go get a knife. Go get a knife. Oh. Yes, I did just grab a dagger off my bookshelf. We're gonna use this little dagger. I have looked at a bunch of reviews of different torches 
And while I was tempted to go for the Smith's Little Torch, didn't quite want to spend a ton of money yet. And again, part of the challenge and the fun of this is trying to do this all on a budget. I didn't want to go with a just basic torch off of Amazon that I might have to replace one or two times. I wanted something at least of a middle quality that will last me. So I went with this. The Dremel Versaflame, I saw a bunch of people recommend this. I've also seen a variety of comments about things that break on it. So I kind of know what to watch out for. Ooh, it comes in this pretty little case. Oh, that's so pretty. When you open the case, this is what you see. I am going to have to figure out how to fill this. But there we go. It has a little stand so I can stand it up. I have my torch. This is definitely one of the most important things you need if you're going to metalsmith. So we are going to go through all of the Amazon purchases first, and then I will go on to the Pepe tools and the Rio Grande. The next thing I bought was a pickle pot. Now you can buy a jeweler's pickle pot and spend a lot more money, or you can just buy a mini crock pot. <laughs> They're cute, adorable, and it will never be used for food, but it's the perfect little pickle pot. And it was definitely less expensive than the official pickle pot. We shall see how it holds up, but from what I've seen, a lot of jewelers do use these little crock pots. They work really well. I think the only advantage with using an actual pickle pot is that it will go to the recommended temperature for pickle. I bought some polishing sticks. Now I do have a lot of files and burrs and all kinds of things because I do work with jewelry already. So I do have some things that I did not have to buy already, but I just don't have like specific polishing sticks because the way I polish my copper electroform jewelry is going to be different than polishing solder jewelry. These are the half round in a variety. The company this is from is PMC Supplies, which is which is a jewelry supplier on Amazon. And it looks like they have pretty good reviews on a lot of their stuff, so. And what I plan to do when these wear out is I'm not gonna buy new ones. What I'm gonna do is buy some sandpapers and just use my double-sided tape and stick them right to it. And that, I think, will be a really good way to save money rather than buying new sticks when they wear out. Yes, these sticks are not expensive, but it's probably gonna be a lot cheaper to just buy the sandpapers. Next, I bought some Renaissance wax. So I wanted to make sure I have a finishing agent so that my jewelry does not oxidize. I have been using Protective Clear for copper electroform jewelry. I wanted to try something different this time and I've seen a lot of good reviews about the Renaissance wax. So I did go with a big tub of it. This is the 200 milliliter jar. Obviously you can get a much, much smaller jar to start and see if you like it. From what I've read and seen, I am 100% sure I'm going to be using this fairly often. So I figured, you know what, I'm gonna save some money and get myself the larger jar because in the long run, it's gonna be less expensive doing the larger one than buying the small one than the larger one. I get more for my money's worth. Next thing we have is some polishing discs. I have seen a lot of people say that they use these silicone polishing discs. They come in this nice little case. And there's a variety of grits, but that these, these are what a lot of jewelers seem to use when they're doing some like fine, nice fine polishing. So see how they work. Obviously I'm gonna make some videos on polishing and we'll see if these are any good. These are just off of Amazon from a company called Sweep, S-W-P-E-E-T. So everything's gonna be linked below. The other thing is I got these bristle discs also. So I have seen bristle discs on Rio Grande and Pepe tools. They're quite expensive. Now, if they are good quality, then yeah, that's probably worth it. I am gonna start with these though and see how these bristle discs work. They have different grits. They're like these little sunbursts. Yeah, so there's these little bristle discs. Each color is a different grit and there's a bunch of them in here. I bought a ring clamp. I'm very excited to make rings. That's my little Hobbit replica. A ring clamp has this little piece of wood and it kind of jams in there to hold your ring together. So I put like a ring in there and then jam it in there as far as it goes and it'll hold my ring. So the ends do have a little bit of leather and this prevents your metals from getting marked or anything. And then I probably am going to put another piece of leather over it when um, I'm using it, but we'll see. It actually seems like it's a pretty nice, decent quality. Has two ends I could use, a rounded end and a flat end. And again, this one is also, I believe, from PMC Tools. Okay, what's in this one? Soldering supplies. Oh, it comes in a little carry case too. I got some tweezers. This was a little kit, which 
I actually found pretty good value for the money. So I get three different types of tweezers, some like angled, curved, and then some straight tweezers. I ordered my third hand and they actually, it's like a set of third hand tweezers. They didn't come in yet. I wanted to film this video, so let me make a short of them when they come in. These are honeycomb bricks. Oh, that's cool. So they have a raised surface on one side and just this little like honeycomb. So there's two of them in this set. These are heat resistant up to a certain temperature. I got some pure copper wire so I can make rings. So I got a nice little assortment of it here. So I got half round and I got some flat wire in here. I got a nice assortment. Um, this is pure copper so I will be able to solder it all together. These will probably be useful for making rings or maybe making some cool designs on my maybe necklaces and stuff. I got bezel wire. Now this bezel wire is 32 gauge and I am wondering if this is going to be thick enough or if it's gonna be too thin for bezels but we shall see i'm learning this is about 20 feet of it a lot for the price i paid for which is pretty good it looks like it bends very easily but i should be able to still solder it this is pure copper one of the most important bits since i'm starting with copper copper solder this is 15 feet of 18 gauge copper solder i'm going to cut this into little pieces with my snips and yeah i'll be able to solder it i also Two more pieces of copper. This is two pieces in here. I forgot what gauge I ordered. <laughs> Let's see if it says on here. This one's a thin gauge though. So this would be good for backing plates. Yeah, so this is a really thin gauge. Um, it's blue because it does have a protective film on it so it doesn't get scratched. So this is what I'm gonna plan to use for backing plates when I put a stone on there and cut it out. Or maybe like um, little design elements that I'm going to solder to another piece. And then this, I believe it's just a thicker gauge of copper. Oh yes, this is definitely, yeah, this is my thicker uh, piece. I actually, they, they put the something on the corners, which is awesome so that they don't get damaged. I'm definitely gonna recommend ordering from this company on Amazon. That is some actual very good packaging. I can tell you very little chance that any of these pieces of copper are damaged in any way. Okay, and that is it for the Amazon stuff. bit is going to be from Rio Grande. I ordered mostly tools here so some and I actually found some of this stuff on Rio Grande cheaper than it would be on Amazon so I was looking to see at the same things and there's definitely a big difference so it comes really nicely packaged. These are some drill bits. I have some drill bits already. I'm using the Works Maker X toolkit so instead of getting you know um, a rotary tool or a flex shaft or anything especially through one of the companies I know Fordham is a very big one that a lot of jewelers use I already own the Works Maker X craft kit and everything so I'm going to be using that flex shaft until I need a better alternative I'm going to learn to use the tools that I have I did get some finer diamond drill bits I figured these would be good for engraving some like little details and things the other thing is in this little one is my charcoal block Obviously, Obviously, I looked at all of these supplies across all three companies. I got my little charcoal block, so I will show you, make a little video on how to prepare the charcoal block before you solder with it. But yeah, I've seen these recommended a lot in a bunch of different videos, and I did decide to go with it because not getting the like jeweler's torch, getting the Smith, uh, I think it's the Smith's little torch. Dremel torch is going to have a little bit of a weaker flame, especially since I'm starting with copper, which has a higher melting point than silver and gold. I'm going to need something that can help with the heat, and charcoal reflects heat, so that's why I went with it. This is one of those things I bought because I know I'm getting into metal smithing as part of my business. This is something I added to the order the bracelet mandrel i already have a ring mandrel from my copper electroforming i don't i never actually knew a bracelet mandrel was a thing so when i saw this i was just like that would be so useful because i've been using my own hand basically to try to make bracelets this is actually has a decent weight to it is nice like has four steps now there's a variety of bracelet mandrels i saw there's steel ones which are probably a lot better for hammering and stuff but I figure to start, I can definitely get away with using a nice little wooden one. It's gonna look nice sitting on my bench top, and then I can make different size bracelets on here. 
I got a bunch of tools here. First thing I do notice, my rawhide mallet. It's a little small. I thought this would be bigger. Note to self, please look at sizes when ordering. Well, I ordered it. That's probably why this was on the cheaper end. Guess I'm gonna just have to make it work. But a rawhide hammer is important so that you don't mark your metals. <laughs> Good thing I work on a very small scale usually. I would definitely recommend ordering a rawhide, my, rawhide mallet if you're getting into metalsmithing. Just, you know, double check your sizes, please. This one is by Garland from Rio Grande. This is the size zero RH mallet, rawhide mallet. I definitely need to get a bigger one eventually. Okay, the other thing I got was a chasing hammer. Now I already have a ball peen hammer. Since I already own that, I decided I'm going to splurge and buy two other hammers just two, technically three if you count the rawhide, but two other metal hammers that I can use, you know, to create different designs and for different purposes. So this is a chasing hammer and it has like sort of flat, sort of slightly, this is slightly rounded head and then has a little ball on the other side. So this ball will let me make little like designs and textures in the hammer and I can actually probably make some textures in this and kind of help like flatten stuff out if I have to. Also, if I'm doing any kind of stamping work, um, I can hold the piece of metal I'm gonna be stamping onto it and then use this. So it's actually a pretty little hammer. I like it. I also did get a goldsmith's hammer. This is a flat cross hammer. The reason I got this is that this will allow me to create different sorts of textures that I cannot create with the hammers that I have right now. I can get it out. This has this little flat point here. This will let me create different textures. And then it has this perfectly flat area right here. A nice little weight to it also. I bought very lightweight ones to start because I don't know what I need really, and I've seen hammers on these websites, and there are some very expensive hammers out there. I'm talking like, you know, $100 for a hammer. What they do, I don't know. Battery magical, I guess. But yeah, just something very simple. I got these three hammers. Nothing too crazy, but something that will allow me to start, at least. I got some stone setting tools. So I do intend to do some stone setting and especially with the copper at first. I got these three. Now they came as a little set. Little bezel pusher, rounded one. This one has like a little cut in it. Yeah, this one has like a little cut in it. And then it's like a little bezel, simple bezel pusher. So nothing crazy, just very simple tools. This set was quite affordable. And I think to start, it should be pretty good. Get me through at least, you know, working with copper and silver for a while, and then maybe eventually if I need to upgrade, I'll upgrade to something better, but I think these would be just fine for quite a long time, honestly. I also did get a burnisher. This is something that when I looked at it, I'm like, I can actually see myself using this. So I just bought it right away. Yeah, it wasn't too expensive either. Last thing from Rio Grande is a set of copper tongs. These are for pickle. These will easily let me drop stuff in and pick stuff out of the pickle uh, without having to worry about touching the pickle because that's usually kind of, you know, not the greatest for skin contact. And I like copper tools. I like copper things, clearly. So last bit of supplies that I got is from Pepe Tools. I really like Pepe Tools. <laughs> They have a lot of cool stuff on their website and I definitely see a bunch of things that I want to get like a ring bender and a rolling mill. There's a very good reason for it. I want to get it. Quite expensive. We're going to see if I can get them once I start selling. For now I'm going to show you what I got from Pepe Tools. First I picked up their Smart Pickle. I've seen a bunch of different pickling solutions. I've seen people create their own pickling solutions. These are not very expensive. And I felt like if I'm going to go into this as a business, I want to make sure I'm getting, you know, good supplies and tools and something that is going to save me time. Oh, there's a scoop in here. I just got the little thing to start actually. And I figured if I like how this works, I am going to go and buy the big top, but I'll let you know how it works. I also got two things, a flux. Reason for that is I wanted to test these out. I did not get the borax. Cone I was going to and getting both of these was actually cheaper than the borax cone and dish at least at the time when I was looking and buying these I got the bench basics yellow flux. So it says self pickling sol solder flux hard um, For hard soldering gold silver platinum preserves metal color and temper. I also 
wanted to try Smart Flux from Bench Basics. So the Smart Flux is unique because it's a flux, but it helps prevent fire scale. Like you coat your entire piece in this and it's just to prevent like fire scale. So there's less time, you know, pickling it. I just got the little jar. Little jar wasn't expensive either, but I wanted to test it out and see how it works. I will obviously make more videos and little reels and shorts and stuff to let you know how these work. I also got soldering picks from Pepe Tools. So these are titanium soldering picks. I got three different ones, but you kind of need these when you're working with solder to kind of, you know, hold things in place so you can use your tweezers, but I got soldering picks too. The last thing I got from Pepe Tools is, Ooh is my solderite board. I did get the large size because I figured maybe if I'm soldering a bunch of things or if something hot falls off of a charcoal block or something because I don't know what I'm doing yet. Having a large board, a large surface will protect one. It'll protect my workbench, my desktop, even though it's already kind of ruined with my crafts and everything. It will also prevent me from accidentally catching something on fire, <laughs> hopefully. So I did get the large solderite board. I hope I showed you that you don't need a ton of supplies to get started, just some really basic things. So flux, solder, torch, board, charcoal, pickle pot, some smart pickle, maybe a, a pair of tweezers. I did buy a bit more than someone who's doing this as just a hobby might, but I also do want to do this as a business. So I am going to buy a little bit more and some better quality tools. Don't forget, I also do have some tools down in the description. I am going to leave a full list of tools that I bought and from what companies. So you can go and click the links and see everything that I got. I'm also going to make a small list of just what I think you need bare minimum just to get started. Definitely don't need anywhere near as much as I bought, but there's a little bit that you do need to get started. I hope you enjoyed watching this unboxing video. Please let me know if you have any questions or want to know anything about any of the tools I bought. Um, as I use everything, I will be, you know, posting little reviews and shorts and stuff. So I hope to keep seeing you back as I continue on learning how to silversmith. Don't forget to hit that like, share, subscribe button. It's free. It helps a little creator out and hopefully you can learn something and come join me. So thank you for all your support so far. It's pretty crazy, but I am almost at 500 subscribers, which is crazy considering I started this channel just over a year ago now. So I appreciate every one of you that leaves a like, a comment, um, interacts with my channel, watches my videos. Thank you guys, because I do want to be a creator. I definitely enjoy this. You guys let me continue doing what I love and hopefully I get to keep doing this for quite a while. Thanks for your support. I'll see you next time.